This is technically part two of the plow install. The first one is the winch install because you need a winch to uh, use the plow. Um, there's a couple other options out there, but winch is the normal one. Um, so make sure you check out part one if you're actually going to do this. Okay, we're here again doing the plow install. We just did the winch install. Um, one thing to note, you can put this right back on when you're done installing the winch. I'm going to leave it off till the end, but it doesn't look like it's going to get in the way of this. Uh, for the worn plow that I'm putting on here, this is the mounting plate. Uh, like I said in the last one, I think it's the same for every one uh, from 2008 on, the King Quad uh, 400 ASI. Get this. this bolt's under the quad. This attaches to two points, I'll show you in a minute. And then you put a U-bolt on this. These ones, which if you look at this this way, they attach to that piece over there, the long one. Um, and that's what attaches to the plow on the front of that. The far end is what attaches to this side, and this end is what attaches to the plow. So we'll look at that more later. For right now, I'm just going to put this on. Uh, today, this is probably all I'm going to get to. I'm probably not going to get to anything else. And it's early. I mean, it's only uh, October, so the plow doesn't really need to be on per se yet. But this mount stays on. Um, and on the plastic cover, I believe you have to make a couple little minor modifications to it to make this work. I have to look at that. So we'll get to that when we get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this whole plate under here this guy it's plastic it looks like it's a bolt there that's where that mount mounts to both sides here so this guy that guy okay so to put this on we actually didn't need to take off the whole skid plate we just need to take off the front bolts and that's so that we could attach these ones in here and I'll show you this in a minute but you put them in here these guys and you then pull this back towards the rear as far as you can and then you push it up and tighten it down. And what you do here is you don't actually cut out a big piece of that, you just drill a hole. A hole right in the corner. And that's basically that and then you put the U-bolts through and hang them down. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put that up there right now. Um, the skate plate has to go up so you'll see me push it up. I have to do. Hopefully, I'm not blocking this. I have to somehow line all this up, which seems more complicated than it probably is. I want you to get a nylon nut on the back of these, and I cannot figure that one out for the life of me. How you could even get it in there. Alright, so that is up. Oh, I'm supposed to push this thing as far back as it'll go. So I'm going to get a wrench and tighten these down, but you're not supposed to tighten them all the way. To actually get behind there and put another nut on there, I, maybe this way? Like, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be really hard to do. So, yes, don't forget your washer because I kept reading this. There's a picture that's, in my opinion, mislabeled. So I'll show you that in a minute.
So there's nothing above this. So now I just need to drill. If I were you, I would check to make sure that there's nothing above it. This side, there's nothing. This side, there's nothing. That's that. So all you do is make two little holes in the skid plate. That's really all it is. See what do you bolt through on both sides?
now. Here, two e bolts, but behind this guy, you have to pop this guy out, get your hand back in there. On this side, you can go this way. On the other side, you have less room. Um, put that little nut on the back of there, it's a lock nut. And yeah, I mean, you can do it, it's just a pain in the butt. So that's that. Now, which I'm not doing today because I don't have enough time right now, so I'll come back tomorrow or the next day, is we're ready to start hooking up the pads. So we're trying a different perspective today because I didn't like in the last video when I was doing the winch. You couldn't see a whole lot and the angles were messed up, so let's try this. Um, so what we are looking at here, uh, I don't know the exact term for this. Here. Plow base assembly, I guess. I don't know. This is the part that connects to the bottom of the four wheeler, and uh, the plow goes on this side. This side connects to the bottom side, and basically on some things. Uh, this stuff here comes in one box, you buy that as a piece. This stuff here, you can't see it, the plow is up over there. They come in their own box. So, uh, what I want to do, and also behind me, uh, all these little pieces on this thing, there's some tools here, but more or less, this stuff, the J hooks, uh, a bolt, a couple washers, they all come with this little guy, and that somewhere attaches, I think it's in this area attaches to hook to the winch and basically this and the J hooks uh, once we get to that point we'll figure out how this attaches um, this is made so that way if you accidentally pull the winch in too far it'll snap the J bolts so that way you don't destroy the plow and or the frame on the ATV so this these J bolts can handle like 500 pounds so if you pull that so tight against the bottom the J bolts will snap that's what it comes down to. So everything comes in their own separate thing. You purchase all this stuff separately, like the bottom piece, and you'll see this stuff in the description of the video. The, uh, the actual frame mount, uh, set, it's called the center mount in this case. Um, that's its own box because this piece and the plow itself are generic to all the plows, I mean to all the ATVs, excuse me. And the the actual mount itself for the Suzuki is specific for the Suzuki. So this stuff is the same for all the plow, all the ATVs you want, but all you really need to do is change the uh, the center mount, and you can put this same worn plow on many different things. So um, that's the only thing that might be different on yours if you have a Honda Recon or Honda, you know, uh, four tracks or something. So what we're gonna do right now. 
we're going to start assembling this. And once we get that assembled, we'll assemble the plow. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to put everything on there, make sure it's right. We're going to hook it all up, and then I'm actually going to take the plow back off because I don't need this on at the moment. We're going to be, it's the beginning of October now, October 10th, somewhere in there. I don't even know. October 7th, 8th, 9th, that, somewhere in there. So whatever day it is, we won't need this plow more than likely till December, probably the end of December, because uh, we're in New York. We don't usually get snow early. It's not unheard of, but we usually don't. So like I guess I want this all together so I can just throw it under there, put the pins in, attach the winch, and be good to go. So, you know, we're talking about like five, ten minute job once it's all set up. Um, and the plow is just going to be put to the side for now. That's the plan. So, Alright, let's get into this. Okay, so this stuff is actually pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, don't crush your fingers. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see all this. Alright, so this comes... The instructions aren't really... I wouldn't say they're in-depth or anything. You kind of have to just guess like what needs to be done. So, I mean, it gives you a, a breakdown, and I'll show you this in a minute. But uh, your pins, I just put them to the side. You need to put the handle on, and this is the handle that controls your angle. Uh, that's what we're going to do first. And then the rest of this all applies to the plow. So we're going to have to, like, basically, this is this is what holds the plow springs. These are the turn points. Um, we're in here, and I think this actually goes this way. Yeah, this goes this way. These sit on here, and the plow, this is where the plow goes. The plow attaches right there. So I'm going to do, I want to put this handle on. There's supposed to be some bolt that goes through. There's three holes right here. Um, it's got to be this guy with you know, lock washers. Let's just make sure. Blah, blah, blah. Six, nine, eight, oh, eight, seven, six, seven, eight, oh, seven. Yeah, it's an M10 nylon. Bar. So yeah, these must go here. And these look like just a... It's like the, the place where the plow sits because the spring part goes back and holds it. I'll show you this as we go, but I'm just looking through trying to make sure what we, which pieces need to be done. So we'll probably throw those in in the picture here, which shows them in the furthest forward hole. So we'll do that, but I mean, there's obviously some adjustments, so that way if you want to put the plow back a little bit. So for this, what we're going to do, this guy connects on here, and this spring sits on the bolt here. Which I don't know if you'll be able to see that. There's a bolt right in the front here. This spring sits directly on top of that. And that just holds this with spring tension so it doesn't move. Just like that. And then this is a 13 millimeter nut. And there's a little spring on this. Does it show? Of course it doesn't show. I assume that this goes. Um, then you just put it right through, and the head is an Allen head. This says H6. That's what I found that fit it. So you could just use a Allen wrench or something. You'd be fine. We're going to get the plow blade. Actually, let's throw these two on here. I can't tell. So this goes in. I'm going to put it in the place that I see in this the picture with the plow. Okay, so this one's a 17. And 
H8 wedding. Like I said, these look just to be a point where everything, um, where the plow just sits, because there's spring tension, so the plow can fall forward if if you uh, if you hit a rock or something. So this is the part that it smashes back onto. So these are replaceable if they get beat to hell, I assume. Torque specs for everything here. It says 8 millimeter is 12 foot pounds, 10 millimeters is 20, and 16 millimeters is 60 millimeters is 100 foot pounds. Uh, I'm just gonna guesstimate everything because that's what I do. Um, I'm assuming these guys as 100 foot pound ones. All right, so let's get the. That's, I think basically all I can do. So let's get the plow blade and we'll put it down here. We gotta put the. Uh, a little lip on it and this lip is replaceable so when you rip it all apart which I'm sure I will so this comes with a kit its own kit the flat this all comes with the plow these bolts like two more so we'll figure out what they're for as we go. Hmm. Alright, I need a skill. I'm not wasting my time doing all these. These are also 17 millimeters. We're ready to to go and put the blade on. Okay. So these go in the circle holes over there. This goes on the outside. Bolt on the inside. Like that. On both sides. So what you have to do is we're going to have to align, it probably be better to do it like this. We have to align the blade with it, um, put the bolt through, put this guy through, then put the washer on the outside. So let me get the correct size for this. This is a 24, and now we should be able to align this guy. Probably have to lift this back end a little bit to do it properly. Fall in, circle here. You gotta make sure that lines up.
this guy up. So now we're going to put the springs on. And I think that's it. So now what we're doing is we're putting these big springs on. And these legitimately are there to pull the blade back when you hit a rock or something. So what we have to do, so we just have to tighten these enough so that there's tension on the spring. There's two nuts because you're just locking one nut against the other one. So I'm just going to get this started. You want enough tension on it so that you can't pull this out. So you're probably going to want to go down maybe that much. That might be a little too far actually, but we're going to try it. <coughs> Yeah, this is just starting to push. That's probably good. It's just starting to pull the actual spring apart. So let's try that. You can always adjust this back a little bit if you had to. So I need another. That's all you're doing. You're locking the two nuts together. Same thing over here. You want to make sure they're generally speaking the same. So now we've got to set up the J hook. We need to take this little bracket um, and run it through here. I'm going to try to put this on before. And it's, uh, this is all 14 millimeter. Should be interesting. So I'm gonna need a 14 millimeter wrench. Or nine, I think it's 9 sixteenths. I think we have to put the plow on the actual thing, and then it's the J-bolts to hook down the bracket. Okay, so all I did for right now, I generally line this, I have the, the four really the neutral break off, and I roll it to where it should be. Put it in gear so it doesn't move. Which I don't know if that matters on this thing, but now what I'm gonna do. Big deal. We need to bring these pins with us. And I believe you get two of these in case you break one. From what I can tell, you can only use one. 
So we're gonna figure that out in a minute. Line this guy up. I'm stuck. Let's line it up. Then you gotta hook this over top. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. It should be a hair bit easier since we got one lined up. No, oh, it's dusty in here. That's that. Okay, now in the front. We need some slack, and I believe we just hook in the J bolt down here, and then we're done. So let's get let me get one of these. It's an 11 millimeter. Um, tightening it down is going to be fun because it's on the ground. Uh, hmm. I think the best bet was this. <clears throat> Take the plow. <clears throat> Lift it up a little bit to make your life a little easier. I really think they want you to have it through the winch cable, but I guess. The J-hook goes through like this. I guess you could go this way too if you felt like it. I'm thinking you want the, uh, the wiggle room there. I just don't. I think we're going to have to take on this winch specifically because it's got this metal stuff here. I think we're going to have to take our hook off to do this. I think we're going to just do the winch cable directly to this. Not, not a big deal. You just have to keep your winch hook with you if you ever need it, you know. Um, but I think that's what's going to work for us. So let's take this. Go straight down. Put your washer on. Your nut. I know you can't see me doing that, but it's on the other underside. And then you just tighten it down until it's until it's tight. And that's that. So hook, very important. So yeah, that's how you install the worn 54 inch plow. It's just gonna be the same. The all the base stuff is the same for this. The blade is what's different. If you want one of the fancier ones, you could always do that. So I'm gonna go see what it feels like driving it around a little bit. And that'll be that. I'll see you in the next one.